Hey, so this is Amy Siri B waiting outside for the light rail on this very nippy fall day, uh, heading downtown to go to the art crawl. And I have to say that these like little fancy schmancy little warmers don't do a whole lot. <laughs> Uh, which I would liken to a light bulb cooking a brownie. <laughs> not that helpful. And it's not that cold yet. We're talking like 39 degrees today, so getting a little nervous for winter. <laughs> I specialize in a little bit of sweet with a little bit of dark. It's like um, hanging on by a thread. The idea of that is something I've been dealing with a lot lately. I just can't stop hammering metal. I do have a little Viking heritage in my family. So one of my favorite things to do with the St. Paul Art Crawl is invite new friends to it who have not experienced the citywide event in our various artist loft spaces. They're always so impressed by the wide variety of artists that we attract and that we maintain here in the Twin Cities. Fortunately, today I was able to capture a few of the artists on film and got them to share with me what it is that makes their work unique and the kinds of things that inspire them. I was blown away by the vulnerability and the intimacy that they shared in this, not only with their work itself, but by their ability and willingness to articulate it for me. Well, I guess for me, art is the ultimate um, union with creation. And so, much of my, my work comes from being in a space and feeling it and then allowing myself to be accessed visually and through the heart space and then I move it out into paintings. And the last place that I painted was on the western Minnesota prairie. I had a little studio on the cornfield and uh, that's the creations that are mostly in this space here in Lower Town. I'm happy to be here and start a new chapter with some urban infusion into my work. <laughs> I love the color, I love its history, I love the character and the fun it brings, and memories are there. Everyone awesome. sees it, the motel signs, so much history. second before it's about to capsize and go away and the smoke and the ashes are already up into Valhalla with his soul. Do you have Viking heritage in your family? I do have a little Viking heritage in my family. What I love about art is uh, that it's uh, historical. Um, art is uh, what we, the best way we know history is through art, uh, through its writings, through its paintings, through its sculptures. Uh, art has uh, depicted our life. And, uh, and that's what I'm trying to do right here with my art is depicting my life and what I see around me 
And, uh, and I go back to ancient cultures to actually pull some of that knowledge too though. And so a lot of my work looks like artifacts. And so that's why I call a lot of my shows artifacts is the ancient uh, knowledge that I've brought into our society. So with like the Valhalla pieces, um, a lot of people think it's kind of like ice that it's in. For me, it's more like it's water that's been trapped in that instant. Like when you take a photograph, water looks like it's frozen in that moment. And that's what this is, is this is a capturing of a, a, a moment just before the boat capsizes. So this is that moment capturing the water. The water in, in my mind is actually still liquid um, and flowing. So that's why I, this piece is kind of like, I love this piece, it's really fun. But I had to lean in a kiln at 1900 degrees and push this bronze boat into the glass while it was liquid to get this effect, which is really hot and completely different than just water. <laughs> Um, we have a, a, a luminized Kevlar suits that are reflective, that reflect the heat back, but also are protective. But that only lasts for about five seconds. And then the heat starts kicking through it um, and it gets hot real fast. So you got five seconds to actually work before you got to get out of it. And then it cools down really fast too. So this clothing is awesome, but it also, it only lasts for a short bit. Yeah. describe my paintings as my ramblings. It's kind of like entries in a diary. Uh, it's kind of, each kind of thought leads to a dot or a line or this or that. They're more like webs than about one thing, I guess I would say. Uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of just social observations. Uh, sometimes it's really personal. Sometimes it's you know about what I have going on in life, but other times it's about what I'm watching other people do, I guess. Really a mashup of a lot of different styles. Like for example, my paintings, I typically start I guess kind of similar to like a abstract expressionist, like an action painting where I put the painting on the floor, throw kind of paint on it, water, whatever. I move it around until eventually I kind of just see something emerge, similar to looking like in a cloud or something, where I kind of find a subject to relate to. And then I really like kind of an organic flow at first, kind of a flow of consciousness. Um, but then it kind of, I like to disrupt that with a lot of like geometric shapes or something to kind of contrast that. I guess I like a lot of contrast. <laughs> My name is Heather Renault and I am a Twin Cities artist. I specialize in a little bit of sweet with a little bit of dark, so lots of whimsy, lots of nature. And I'm so happy to be here at St. Paul Art Crawl and to be a part of Minnesota Makers. Um, we've got a great community and I'm happy to be a part of it. Like many metalsmiths start out, start out, I was a beater. I, I crochet with beads, I made beaded necklaces and bracelets. But I, I got tired of buying the clasps and the earring posts that are on the market and started making my own. And that got me hooked on hammering metal and I can't stop. My name is Jane Dreiss and I love to hammer metal. And I, and I hammer metal in many different ways and shapes. I'm a silversmith and I make things out of fine silver like shot glasses and Cheetos tongs, things people didn't know they needed in silver. And I'm, I make a lot of bowls and I'm also a blacksmith where I'm hammering red hot iron, actually white hot iron. And this is a northern pipe bottle opener 
but I'm also learning tin smithing, where I'm making cookie cutters. This is a diamond cookie cutter. And let's see, I'm a goldsmith, a goldsmith jeweler. I, I set stones. So I'm a smith of many hats. And it's, I just can't stop hammering metal. And I even have an apron at home that says, hammer like you mean it. I should have worn it today. Mostly, I hope people, it just, it's thought provoking. And it doesn't have to be like deep existential crisis kind of thought. It can be, a lot of them are about that. But uh, also just something to relate to, like a moment, uh, like, just like um, hanging on by a thread. The idea of that is something I've been dealing with a lot lately working a lot, um, juggling like the art thing with a real job and that kind of thing, where we all, I think, tend to feel overworked at times and uh, you're kind of stressed out, but you're also trying to find that balance. And if I think people can just see something even that kind of ambiguous to relate to and just, you know, feel like we all have something in common, I guess. And how could we live without art? It, it, it just makes you happy. It, it makes me happy making it. People like to wear it and adorn themselves. They like to adorn their homes, and it's been that way for eons. And I mean, think of even cavemen wearing bone necklaces. It's, it's something we seek to do, and it fulfills us. It makes us happy. Every time I experience this type of deeper human connection, it begs the question for me, for what each of us are doing that's impacting others, for better and for worse. And how is it that we might be able to tip that scale a little bit more where we'd like it to be instead of where it often is? So knowing that, what would you like your contribution to be to the dialogue? Fortunately now, my light rail is coming. I'm about to have a fantastic time with the art crawl, so have a good one.